What's up everyone, welcome to Hi-Fi Turtle. If you know me, you know that my primary hobby is high-end audio, hence this channel and what I post on Instagram. But my other hobby is investing in the stock market. The stock market and the audio game kind of are in some ways somewhat similar. Everybody has varying opinions on what's best. There are lots of confusing words like swap, derivative, gamma. And with the stock market in particular, there seems to be a more dank and silly side people on various forums that say things like we're going to the moon we're going to buy lambos and i can't say i haven't uttered those phrases so this isn't a video about investing or anything like that but we are going to the moon and by that i mean a quick review of the moon by sim audio 700i v2 integrated amplifier stay tuned The 700 IV2 is the flagship integrated amplifier offered by Sim Audio. It comes in at $15,000 US. It weighs 62 pounds and it's about 19 inches wide, which proved too big for my DIY rack, unfortunately. So this unit had to sit on the floor while I was reviewing it. It's a very powerful amplifier. It puts out 175 watts into eight ohms and that doubles into 350 at four ohms. The first five watts of which is class A while the rest is class AB. Powering the amplifier are two toroidal transformers that are rated at 500 volt amps each. There's also a separate 25 volt amp power transformer that powers the preamp section of the amp. This dedicated preamp power section is one of the key differences between the 600i and the 700i. This unit was lent to me by my local SIM audio dealer, Quintessence Audio. Make sure you check out the link below in the description and look at their other wares and seriously check them out because they really are an awesome dealer. There are a lot of features that are built into this integrated amp and just turning to the back will already clue you into some of the features that are packed in the box. You have a single pair of balance inputs and then four single-ended inputs, but on top of that, you also have a line out so you can use this device in home theater bypass and or just use it as a preamp, as well as a tape monitor output. There's an RS-232 connector for smart home automation, as well as 12 volt triggers to turn on other devices or connect via SIM link to other SIM audio products. Going to the options for each of the inputs, you have a lot of different customizations here. You can change the name of each individual input. You can set a max volume so your kids don't blow your speakers. You have balance for each channel, and this balance is not just adjustable up to one or two or three dB. It's adjustable all the way to cutting out one of the channels, which is pretty cool if you have an odd shaped room or you have trouble positioning your speakers because one channel just always ends up being louder than the other. You can also set the gain for each of the inputs, which may change the sound a little bit. My benchmark DAC3L, which is the DAC that I used in conjunction with this integrated amplifier, has dB pads that are internally selectable for that DAC. So you can set it to negative 20, negative 10, or zero on the gain. In comparison, the 700i has adjustable settings from negative 10 to positive 10 in 0.1 dB increments. I noticed on the negative 10 dB pad, which has the highest output impedance, there seemed to be more bass overall. But I actually liked the more neutral sounding presentation, so I ended up putting it back to negative 20, which is closer to the Benchmark's default output impedance and closer to a lot of other preamps that I've seen on the market. Before I forget, I do want to give a shout out to Sim Audio on the construction of their remote. This is probably the best remote that I've ever seen in high-end audio. If there's one criticism that I think a lot of people could give to the high-end audio world, it's that when you get a product, a really high-end product at that, when you get the remote, it looks like something from a VCR out of 1995. The Sim Audio remote is heavy, it's big, it's solid, it's great. It's fully featured, has backlighting that you can turn off. You can even change the balance controls right from the remote. The construction of the amp is top notch. It's an all aluminum case with a mixture of sandblasted and brushed aluminum, which looks incredible. And then in the middle, you have this solid block of aluminum that bears the Moon logo and the name. You only see this logo on their upper echelon of products. So I honestly think this plate is a little bit of a flex and I think it looks awesome. You also have WBT binding posts, which I can tell why people really enjoy that brand because they really felt like something solidly built. So another thing I like about Sim Audio just in general is that they're not afraid to show you under the hood of their products. If you go to the, just their website, you can see inside this amplifier and maybe get a good idea of what's special about it. But Quintessence gave me the go ahead to also open up this amplifier, so I'll give you a few inside shots here. This is a true balanced dual mono design. If you split this amplifier in half, you would just get a mirror image of the other side. 
you see the individual transformers, the individual input boards, the individual output boards, everything is separated. This integrated amplifier is really like a pair of monoblocks stuffed into one box. You have the twirl transformers that are both potted and shielded by mu metal and an epoxy. They're also sat on these little rubber pads to additionally defeat vibrations to the transformer. Going further, he had very recognizable and high quality names like Nippon Chemcon, Nichikan, Wima, Taurus power throughout the amplifier. And particularly in the preamp power stage, the filtering capacitors are custom made capacitors by Nichikan for sim audio. And this customization also extends to the bipolar output transistors on the amplifier stage, custom made for sim audio. If I had to be extremely particular and say one bad thing about this amplifier, it would be the fact that when you turn it on, it has this really annoying blue LED. It's not exclusive to SIM Audio, a lot of manufacturers do this. And when I'm 50th president of the United States, it will be illegal to have these blue LEDs on any electronic component, mark my words. So let's get to the sound. The primary amp that I had to compare this against was my Hegel H20, which I've done a review on and is my mainstay amp. It's the one that I own and know very well. Comparatively, the two are very similar. Tone-wise, the Sim Audio is on the bright side of neutral, a little bit more forward. The Hegel shares these characteristics as well. That being said, I do prefer the Sim Audio, and I should. It's more than twice the price of the Hegel. I primarily like to listen to hard rock and heavy metal, but I listen to a wide array of music with this amplifier. One area that particularly stuck out to me with bass on this was with double bass drum pedals, and there's a lot of that in hard rock and heavy metal. Depending on the song, sometimes the Hegel can sound a little muddy. You don't get each individual hit on the drum. You can hear, you can tell a double bass drum is going, but it sounds like one coherent note. Where with the Sim Audio, each individual time the mallet hits the drum of that head, you are getting that information. It is so quick, so sharp, so pointant. It was just on it every time. And I thought the Hegel was a really fast amplifier. So going to the Sim Audio, it's like, wow, you know, you think your V8 engine's really fast, but then you see it compared to the F1 car, there's no comparison. Tom drums as well were extremely sharp. They had this really nice tubbiness to them. I noticed that a lot in Slays Beyond Death by Thy Art Is Murder. There's a part where most of the other instruments in the band are kind of muted or toned down, but you have this just boom, boom, boom with the tom drum. And it's just so lifelike, so flushed out, so sharp and so satisfying. I was like, okay, that, that, that's it. That's the difference right there. Mid-range was very similar between the two. I felt like vocals didn't seem clearer or more lifelike or anything like that. If anything, I thought that some vocals at times felt a little bit further back with the Sim Audio for some reason. Not better or worse, but just different positioning for the soundstage. And I think that's because the Sim Audio overall did seem to have a deeper soundstage presentation. But I will say the crunch of distorted guitars sounded cleaner to me as oxymoron as that sounds. Where again, I feel like a lot of power chords at times in rock music just seem like one homogeneous note, whereas with the Sim Audio, you can get each individual stroke on the guitar. Then we go to the treble, and I felt like this was a big, big difference. I did think the treble was a little bit more projected forward into the room, so it is a more forward treble presentation, but I never ever thought that it got overly bright or sibilancy to the point where you'd experience ear fatigue. It was just that level of clarity and detail in the treble that I think any audiophile would want to seek. And I think that may have also been exacerbated by the fact that my main speaker is the Focal Sopra 2, which is already known for being a little bit of a bright speaker, but also having just a phenomenally detailed tweeter. There are a lot of songs that I'm very familiar with where I hear the drum kit and I'm like, okay, that is hi-hat, ride, crash, whatever. But this is the kind of detail that makes you realize why there are hundreds of different symbols in varying size, varying construction, because each of them have a varying sound. And while it may be easy to distill something as just a ride symbol, hearing different rides, different crashes used throughout an entire drum kit and having enough detail to pick out each individual symbol throughout the song, that's not something I can say I've experienced in this room at least with anything but the Sim Audio. As far as the amplifier pairings, I think this amplifier would pair very well with Focal, Dyn Audio, Sonus Faber, which I really enjoy the Sonus Faber and Sim Audio combination. Every time I hear it, it's just beautiful. And I would highly recommend it to any Hegel owners out there. This amplifier is something 
that is that next step up. It's that you've reached a certain point of performance and you're looking for what is next for you. So if you're a Hegel owner or an SPL owner and you're looking for what is the next step in fidelity, this Sim Audio checks all the boxes for me. It's definitely a component that's worth checking out. And Sim Audio overall is just an awesome company. They make everything in Canada. They got a 10 year warranty, which is one of the best in the industry. So if you haven't already, you gotta check out Sim Audio products. And if you do, you can be like me and say, we're going to the moon. That's gonna do it for me. If you like this video, make sure you hit that thumbs up. Subscribe really helps me out. Check the links below in the description for other ways to help support the channel. And I'll see you in the next one.